Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today, what I want to do is to go over our very first actual lesson that we're going to be having here in math class. And so, what I want you to do, uh, or what I want you to focus on, is uh, OneNote. So, we are going to be opening our OneNote. Uh, by now, you should know how to open that. It should not be uh, something difficult. Uh, it should almost be second nature. And so my one, my one may look a little bit different than yours uh, as far as the interface, but for the most part, it's, it's the exact same thing. Yours should look a little bit more like uh, this one up here. And so uh, I'm going to be working off of one first period. Um, and... Uh, just because I need to pick one of the periods, right? And so anyways, uh, so the first thing I want you to do is uh, we're going to be going to our, click on your name. And from there, you're gonna go to classwork. And under classwork, you're gonna find a tab that says 1-1 comparing and ordering numbers and decimals. 1-1 comparing and ordering numbers and decimals. And by clicking on that, you will find uh, a few pages from our Springboard textbook, which is the textbook that we, were, we are gonna be using this school year. Now, if it's too small, remember ladies and gentlemen that you can always go to the top and click on view and zoom in. And I would want you to zoom in until uh, it's visible, clearly visible. Um, because uh, we're only gonna be reading from this uh, I also want you to have your physical notebook ready. Uh, and from that physical notebook, when we finish this assignment and notes, we do the assignments and notes at the same time, you are going to take a picture of that and you will put that picture here uh, on that second tab where it says SD1-1 work. There you will put a picture of each of the pages that you used for this assignment. Okay, now if you have questions about how to do that, remember that on Schoology I did post a video that is titled How to Upload a Picture uh, onto your OneNote notebook. And so please uh, keep that handy. Uh, it is step by step. Uh, please follow those directions uh, and you should be fine. And so having said that, again, going back to OneNote, uh, we are at 1-1 comparing and ordering numbers and decimals. And before we begin, uh, I do want to draw your attention to my notebook, uh, because uh, my notebook is gonna model what I, I want you to have in your own notebook. And so this being our very first uh, journal or notebook entry, I want you to title it, just as I have titled mine, uh, where it says SB 1-1 comparing and ordering numbers. And I realize that my handwriting isn't the most legible handwriting in the world. And so I'm just going to type it in. It says comparing, um, there it is, comparing and ordering numbers. Okay. And from there, so SV1-1 comparing and ordering numbers. Uh, if you highlight that, that's helpful. Uh, good. You're going to write page or PG three through five. Those are the pages from our springboard textbook that you find on OneNote. So page three through five. And then at the very top of your paper, I do want you to put a big number one because this is our first lesson. We're not going to number our pages. We're going to number our lessons. And this is our first lesson. And then please write the date as well. Uh, just as another way to keep track of our work. Once you have finished that, and this is very important, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to write down the hashtag symbol or pound symbol. It just means numbers. These are the numbers that you are accountable for in your homework. You're going to be doing numbers one through seven, semicolon, and, that's, and then we're going to do numbers 11 through 14. So that means that you're responsible for, for numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and then numbers 11, 12, 13, and 14. And so we're going to be going over most of those, not quite all of them. So again, the purpose of this uh, video is simply to uh, give you an idea of how it is that we're going to be doing our assignments and our notes in this class. Again, our notes and our assignments are usually going to be intertwined together. Having said that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the first thing I want to do uh, is let's go to number one. 
So uh, number one is based on this, uh, this paragraph up here where we're talking about paramecium. And paramecium are tiny one-celled organisms. Again, I'm just paraphrasing what is on this paragraph up here. They are tiny one-celled organisms that, uh, that you can find in fresh water and the like. Uh, not, nothing to freak out about, but they do look a lot like little uh, grains of rice. Uh, sometimes they look a, a little bit like like swimming pools, uh, et cetera. But they do tend to have little hairs kind of growing on the sides of them that help propel these creatures through the water environments where you can find them. Uh, and so in this uh, problem or in this example, we're given four different paramecium. We have Aurelia, which we're just gonna label A. We have Berseria that we're gonna label B. We have Caudatum, that we're going to label C, and then we have multi-micronucleatum, which we're going to label M. So just A, B, C, and M. And then here we have the length of each of those. And, and even though it's being measured in meters, notice how little these meters really are. Okay, if this was one meter long, which is about a yard, then it would be uh, 1.0 something. But we're not nowhere close to that. Okay, in fact, if you look at, our, at your ruler, if you look at the centimeters, you need 100 centimeters to make one meter in the same way that you need 100 cents to make a dollar. So 100 of those little centimeters to make a meter. If these were centimeters, then it would be 0 0.01 or one hundredth of a meter. And notice how this is even smaller than that. Uh, and then if you look again at your ruler at the centimeters and you look at those tiny lines between the centimeters, those are known as millimeters. Those are one thousandth of a meter. You need a thousand of those little ones to make a meter. And those are 0 0.001 of a meter. So this is closer to what each of these paramecium are. And so just so you can barely see those, uh, if you were to see a full grown paramecium, they're about that big, one to two centimeters or millimeters, sorry long. And so the first thing that we did, ladies and gentlemen, is that we copied this table down, or we're going to copy this table down onto our notebook, just as I have done over here. And in class, uh, I will allow you to I'll allow you some time to do that. But let me show you uh, a little bit of what that looks like on my own notebook. So here it is. And notice uh, some of the things that I did here. I labeled it as number one. Let me get something a little bit brighter. I label this as number one because this is the first problem uh, in our homework and it's our first example in our notes. Okay, and I simply co copied that table. Okay, uh, ones, tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. Here's an example of what each one of those uh, place values looks like. And then here's a space for A or Aurelia, B, C, and M. Okay, and all of what we're gonna do is that whatever we see on this, uh, on this table, we're gonna fill in accordingly on this table over here. So let me erase some of these things. Um, there we go. All right, now it's a little bit nicer. Okay, so for Aurelia, we have, uh, for example, the first digit is a zero, and that's a zero in the ones place. So I'm going to put a zero in the ones place. We have a decimal. We have a zero on the tenths place. So a zero in the tenths place, zero in the hundredths, a one on the thousandths place, a five in the ten thousandths place, and a six on the hundred thousandths place. Good. Berseria, um, zero in the ones place, zero in the tenths, zero in the hundredths, zero in the thousandths, a nine on the ten thousands and a seven on the hundred thousands. So that is exactly, I'm doing it here on the textbook. However, I want you to do the same on your actual table that you drew or that you would have drawn on your notebook. And so for you, it would look something like this. Uh, for Aurelia, it would be zero on the ones. Here's my decimal. Zero on the tenths, zero on the hundredths, one in the thousands. Uh, five on the ten thousands and six on the hundred thousands. For Berseria, we have a 0 0.00097. For C, we have 0 0.00181. And for M, we have 0 0.002. 
zero, zero. I hope that's not too hard to see. That's not the best color for this, is it? Uh, anyways, here I have filled out my table. You need to have something very similar on your own table uh, in your own notebook. Again, you will be taking a picture of this notebook and uploading it into OneNote at the end of this assignment so that uh, you can prove that, that you did your work. Okay, so now let us move on to number two. Uh, let me clear this. Moving on to number two. So notice how I made a space for number two, and here's where I'm going to work out number two. Uh, so let me go back to the actual textbook. And in the textbook, number two says, the table shows zeros in both the tenths and the hundredths place for Aurelia. So we're going to focus on Aurelia. So we're focusing on this one. Okay. And then it says, then it says, I'm sorry. Um, so it's saying that it has zeros both on the tenths. So there's a zero right here in the hundredths place. Okay. Name the value for the one, the five, and the six. So now essentially, so we have a one here for Aurelia and, we, and it's asking what's the place value? Well, the place value for that one is the thousandths place. So, uh, and you're doing this on your textbook, but since I'm here already, I might as well do it. Why is it not allowing me to do this? Oh, I see why, okay. Anyways, so then I'm going to write one, it would be the thousandths place. And you're not doing any work here on the textbook, you would be doing the same thing, but over here on your actual, um, on your actual uh, notebook. So here you would write thousandths place. Uh, now let's look at uh, the five, which the five in our table would be in the ten thousandths place. So going back to my notebook, the five would be in the ten thousandths place. Uh, definitely did not spell that correctly. Thousandths place. And finally, the six would be in the hundred thousandths place. Hundred thousandths place. Okay. And so that's what you would have on your actual notebook, obviously written with your pencil or erasable pen. Uh, by the way, on your notebooks, ladies and gentlemen, please, please, please use pencils, maybe erasable pens. And if you use an erasable pen, please use black or blue. Otherwise, it's really hard to see. And so as you can see, again, I showed my work. I'm doing this on my notebook. I'm, I'm showing that I know, I know what I'm talking about, okay? Uh, number three. So going back over here, here, let me clear this uh, page. So number three reads, uh, which paramecium was larger, Aurelia or Berseria? So what I would do in my notebook is I would write down the sizes for each of those. So here's my notebook. For Aurelia, if you remember, Aurelia was 0 0.00156. Berseria, however, was zero and zero, 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 nine, seven. So in essence, it's asking me to compare these two numbers. Well, if we compare them, they both have the same value in the ones place, same value in the tenths place, same value in the hundredths place, but notice the thousandths place. Here we can clearly see how Aurelia has a one in the thousandths place and Berseria has a zero. Therefore, I can already tell that Aurelia is longer than Berseria. Okay, and so that's how I would do it. So everything I did here is what you would do in pencil to show your work on, on your notebook. And you would follow that same logic for uh, four, which is asking which paramecium was shorter, Aurelia or Caudatum. Um, and, and so you would compare A and C and we'll see which one's shorter. And for five, which paramecium was the longest out of all of these four, which was the longest, and you would explain how you found that answer. So you would do those on your own. And on my notebook, I left those blank because I didn't want to just give you the answers, but uh, notice how I left myself enough space to do those. Now in class, we will have covered number six because it's a little bit different. And in number six, we have a different uh, set of information. Uh, so what they did is that they, they had a race between all of these paramecium and they had them race a distance of, they had them race a distance of 10 millimeters, which is one centimeter. So again, uh, you see centimeters, just one of those. That's how long of a distance they traveled. 
And here, it, here are the results. It took Aurelia 11.6 seconds. It took B 11.3. It took C 13.4. It took M 12.7. It took J a new one. It took 13 seconds. And so what I want you guys to do is to copy this, this uh, number line down on number six, and we're going to put these results on that number line. So let's go to our handy dandy notebook and notice how I already have a number line right here. Now, if you don't have a number line yet, then I would encourage you to draw one. Um, and so we start with a line. And from there, uh, I'm going to mark it from 11 to 14. So this is 11, 12, 13, and 14. And let's not forget to actually write in what those lines mean. So this is 11, this is 12, it's 13, and 14. And the book, they go by two. So they go 11.2, 0.4, 0.6, 0 0.8, and then 12, 12.2, 12 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. I just went by five. So 11, 11.5, which is right in the middle. 12, 12.5 right in the middle. 13, 13.5 in the middle. It doesn't really matter. And so next I'm going to plot, I'm going to plot uh, this information onto that number line. Okay, and that's a little skinny, but I think you can actually see it. Okay, so... A, Aurelia, that's going to be at 11.6. So here's 11. 11.5 is halfway through. 11.6 is going to be a little bit ahead of that, and that's going to be A for Aurelia. B for Berseria, 11.3. So here's 11, 11.2, 11.3 is going to be around right here. So between 11 and 11.5. Cool. C for Caudatum, 13.4. So here's 13, 13.1, 13.2, 13.3, 13.4. Right behind 13.5, and that's going to be C. M is going to be 12.7. So 12, 12.5, 12.6, 12.7. So around right here. And finally, J is going to be right at 13. So I'm just going to fill in 13. And there it is. That is number six. And number seven simply asks, Name the paramecia with times faster than 12 seconds. Remember that when we're dealing with time, the faster something is, the less time it takes. Or rather, the less time it takes something, it takes something, the faster it is. Uh, so, uh, for example, if it takes somebody 10 minutes to finish their homework and somebody 20 minutes, who finished faster? the lesser time, the one in 10 minutes. So when it's asking, name the paramecia with times faster than 12 seconds, we're asking for times that are less than 12 seconds. So anything that is less than 12. So that would be just B and A. Times that were faster than 12 seconds would be uh, things, uh, would be M, J, and C because, I mean, slower than 12 seconds, sorry, would be M, J, and C because they took longer than 12 seconds. And that's kind of how that works. And, and really, if, if I'm going too fast, ladies and gentlemen, that is intentional. I don't want this video to go too long. But remember, you can always pause, rewind. Um, that's why I'm doing this. Let me clear everything. Good. So that was, we don't have to do number eight because uh, we only have to do one through seven. And then now let's move on to number 11. In my notebook, I ran out of space. I would rather you use more paper and not be so cluttered than for you just to clutter everything into one sheet of paper. So what I did is I, I took out another sheet of paper and this is where I started with number 11. Now notice how in number 11, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it actually has four parts to it. Okay, here's 11A, 11B, 11C, and 11D. So that's four different problems. So let's work on 11A. And the first thing I'm gonna do is, on, what, what we have to do is compare the two quantities given with these symbols, the greater than and the less than symbol. I believe you guys did that in elementary school. And so in A, we're gonna compare the numbers uh, 0 0.7 and 0 0.652. So 7 tenths and 652 thousandths. So I'm going to go over here and as you can see, I already wrote these down. 7 tenths and 652 um, thousandths. And so most of us might be able to do this in our heads. However, uh, here's some reasoning behind it. If this is 7 tenths, and this is, and I'm going to line these up. Notice how I'm lining up the decimals uh, in a vertical way. 652 thousandths. Notice how they both have the same value in the ones place. Here's the decimal. But let's look at the next value, place value, which is the tenths place. The seven is already larger than the six. Then automatically, seven tenths is larger than 652 thousandths. 
Okay, if I fill this with zeros, I can call this 700 thousandths. Obviously, 700 thousandths is greater than 652 thousandths. <coughs> Same thing on over here for B, 31 and 31.59. 31.59 is obviously a little bit bigger than 31. Um, the main thing, ladies and gentlemen, is that you copy this exactly as you see it on your textbook. If you just give me an answer, I'm going to mark that your notebook part wrong. I'm not going to take that work. Remember that, when, that for your homework assignments, it's a, there's two grades. There's the notebook grade, which is what you're going to submit to uh, OneNote, which I'll show you that how to do that at the end. And then your, your other grade is going to be your submission on Schoology, which again, I will show you how to do that. And so, uh, so you're going to do A, B, C, and D. You can do that on your own. For number 12, we're organizing these numbers from least to greatest. All right. So I do want you to, to uh, the easiest way that I found to do this, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to use B as an example. Remember, we have A, B, and C. So if I was doing B, and I would do this on my notebook, uh, not here. Please don't write on the textbook. Uh, even on, on this, uh, that's not showing your work. I want you to show your work on your notebook. Uh, what I would do is I would first organize these uh, from, um, I would organize them just the way that, they, that they're that they there on the sheet of paper. So let's start with, so this is B, uh, two and 31 hundredths. Okay, and, and I'm gonna organize them with the decimals lined up. We have zero and 231 thousandths. We have 23, which is a whole number, and one tenth. So there's the tenths. Notice how I land with the decimals. We have zero and 23 uh, hundredths. And then we have three and 21 hundredths. Notice that when I line them up, it looks a little weird, but it's showing me exactly where each one of these numbers falls on the um, on the place value scale. So let's start with the least. So let's find the smallest numbers. So obviously it's not going to be 23. And over here we have two, zero, three, zero, and three. So it's going to be either this one or this one. <coughs> so let's compare those two. Notice how uh, the two is the same. So that's fine. Let's move on. The three is the same, but over here we don't have anything. And over here we have a one. So obviously, this one is smaller, so I'm, that's going to be my first answer. Zero and two hundred, uh, sorry, 23 hundredths, followed by this one. Zero and 231 thousandths. Okay, so let's move on. So we're done with these two. Uh, next is going to be between two and three. Obviously, two is less, so it's going to be two and 31 hundredths. And followed by three and 21 hundredths. And finally, 23 and one. Now they are organized in order, but again, you would do that work on your notebook. So do that for A, B, and C. This was B. For 13, you just want to uh, write out, describe the steps that you would follow to compare the two decimals. And finally, in number 14, all you have to do is the same thing you did in number 12, where you're going to organize these numbers from least to greatest. Um, and here's just a, a bit of an explanation. Don't let all of that confuse you. You're just organizing these numbers from least to greatest. So what are you going to do once you finish? Let us suppose that you finish your work. Here is your first paper, uh, piece of paper, and here's your second piece of paper. And let's just assume that you had done. You finished. You did your work. There's two things you have to do now. Number one, ladies and gentlemen, you need to submit your work on Schoology. You must submit your work on Schoology. Okay, so let's go to Schoology. And now that your work is all written down, um, on your notebook, you're gonna go here and you're gonna have your notebook. I have my physical notebook right here with my answers. I'm gonna to go to week two. I'm going to go to Monday. And notice how there's a puzzle piece of the pencil that says SV1-1 comparing ordering numbers. That is the assignment that we had. That's the assignment that we just did, right? Numbers one through seven, 11 through 14. And so I'm gonna click on that. And you're gonna see a screen that looks very similar to this. You're gonna click on start new attempt. Now this first submission is, looks really weird and long, but notice how this is simply the table that we had. Okay, so now that I have it in front of me, how do I fill this in? Every time I click on it, it doesn't let me type anything. So what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna click on the blanks. I want you to scroll down, look at the blanks. And notice that each time I hit a blank, it highlights a part of the table. So blank one, notice how that highlights 
this part right here. Blank two, notice how that highlights this part over here. Okay, so just, just do it one at a time. Just go one blank at a time. And blank one, I'm gonna type zero because remember that the ones place in our had zero, tens place had zero, hundreds had zero, and then we had one, five, six. And just be looking at the table. Is that what you have on your table? Yes, okay, move on. And then we had, and make sure you put zero, not the letter O. Zero on the ones place for Berseria, zero on the tenths, zero on the hundreds, zero on the thousands, and then we had a nine on the 10,000s and a seven on the 100,000s. Moving on, just keep going up and down. Karatim was zero, 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 one, eight, one. Uh, and yeah, it looks good. And the last one was zero, zero, uh, hundredths, I believe was zero as well. And then I believe it was a two on the thousands. And that's all I need. Good. And so I have just finished this table. It looked complicated, but it really wasn't. Question two is the second question on your textbook, which the value, notice that, remember the value of the one, I believe was the thousands. Again, you can't click here, but if you click on the blank, it allows you to pick whatever you need. And so I believe it was thousands, followed by 10 thousands, and then followed by 100 thousands. I didn't actually have to type it out, just select from the word bank. Otherwise you might, yeah, just, just select from the word bank. Same thing for three, uh, for four, you're gonna select uh, the, the appropriate answer. For five, same thing, you're gonna select the appropriate answer. And I believe, um, yeah, so you'll be doing that. Uh, I think it's like multiple, multiple answer. I might be wrong. Anyways, just answer the questions. I don't remember what the questions are. Uh, same thing in seven, those that were faster than 12, so blank one. So which one of these was faster than 12? I believe Aurelia and Berseria were both faster than 12, uh, and then slower than 12, uh, pick whichever ones of these were slower than 12, same thing. So 11, remember when I told you to make sure that you copied it, you copied, well, firstly, notice how even though this is question seven, it's asking about 11A. So it's asking about the question on your Springboard textbook, 11A. Remember the one where you had to pick which one was larger? So we said that seven tenths was greater than 652 thousandths. And so that means that the answer that I'm gonna put on Schoology when I'm submitting this is gonna be greater than. Um, and so go on and so forth. You're gonna keep doing that. Now, when we go to the ordering, one, a few things to keep in mind. Firstly, you can scroll in the order. So sometimes you might not be able to see it. So just make sure that you, it's scrolled into place. Uh, and that's for each of these ordering ones. And Two, so for 12A, notice that when I move it, it almost seems like nothing's happening. But that's because it's, it's always going to read one, two, three, four, five. Don't listen to that. Look at the numbers over here. Seven, for example, right now, 76 is number one, but I move it down. Now, 76 is number two. Now, it's number three. So as you're ordering this, pay attention to the actual value, not to the number of the order, okay? Uh, so do that for 12A, 12B. Uh, 12C and 414, where you're going to order that. When you finish, remember to click Select Review Answers, and then it's going to allow you to look at your answers. And then please hit Submit. You do have three tries on this. Um, and uh, whenever I see you in class, if you guys have questions about that, please let me know. So that's the first part. The second part, ladies and gentlemen, is actually submitting your, um, your actual uh, work from your notebook onto uh, OneNote. And remember, the best way to do that, ladies and gentlemen, is to go, you need to open it up in Chrome. If you're not working in Chrome, it is not going to work. Uh, you have to uh, do it in Chrome. And I did make a video about that. Uh, and so uh, even if it's a bit redundant, let me show you how to do that. Here's my textbook. I already worked on my textbook. Uh, you guys wouldn't work on your textbook. You guys already did it on your notebook, but I want to submit my assignment. So I'm going to go, I'm on Chrome. And so the easiest way to do that is to simply select where I want that picture to go. Here's the box. I'm going to go to insert picture from camera. Here's my work. Um, I'm waiting for my camera to turn on. It's taking a little bit of time. Um, this is embarrassing. There it is. And now all I need to do is uh, zoom it in or move it so that I can see the whole notebook, maybe even my face so I can prove that it is me. Mr. Lugo posting this. OK, 
hit the camera. And is it clear? Yes, it's clear enough. So I'm going to hit insert. And that's it. As long as you can see all your work clearly, don't worry about cropping it to making it a perfect size. That's fine as long as I can see your work. Now, obviously, that's not all my work. That's only one page of all the ones that I need. And so I'm going to go back here. I want the other picture to be right below it. I'm going to hit insert picture from camera once again. And once again, I'm going to take a picture. Uh, zoom it in so that Mr. Lugo can easily see this because I care about him and he is awesome. Click on the camera. There it is. Notice that it's not blurry. Otherwise, I would retake it. I'm going to hit insert and there it is. Just move it around so that it's exactly where you want it to be and you're done. Now, are there other ways to submit your work? Uh, yes, uh, but for that, I want you to look at the video that I did post on Schoology. Remember, if you need to refresh how to do this, I do go into more detail on Schoology. Uh, the very first video you see here, how to upload a picture from your notebook and make sure you do that. So ladies and gentlemen, by doing that, uh, you guys will be set and uh, you will be ready uh, to go. Uh, and I'll see you in class. Um.